It is super difficult to make a case for the Core i3 in 2020. I mean, let's be real, four threads just ain't gonna cut it in most modern titles. And when you see a significant performance bump from just a core count bump alone, all other things equal, you're being CPU bottleneck, period. Now the Ryzen 3 3100, which we reviewed in a dedicated video, keeps its head above water thanks to simultaneous multi-threading, or SMT. But this is something Intel Core i3s have lacked since they made the move to four cores to begin with. But Intel is planning to change that and that might change my opinion about Core i3s for gaming. So maybe stick around. If you're upset about that inconsiderate Windows activation watermark plaguing your screen, snag an OEM license. SCD key makes it simple. You have one in a few seconds for a little over $10, then click here, 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 and then here, paste your activation key, and you can kiss that watermark goodbye. And be sure to use my new offer code GSL for a 12% discount on your order. So with the announcement of new Comet Lake desktop SKUs came a fair degree of speculation. Intel added hyper-threading to both its 4-core i3 and 6-core i5 lineups, essentially mirroring the SMT-enabled equivalents from AMD in the R3 and R5 categories. And this is what we've been waiting for. I mean, finally, Intel's responding to the core count push from Team Red. But it isn't all sunshine and rainbows. Comet Lake is another rehash of the 14 nanometer node, so we don't expect power efficiency and die size to shrink with the new launch. In fact, the 10 core i9-10900K, the name itself is just ridiculous, is expected to consume an excess of 200 watts of power, and that's stock. The new Intel chips will also require new motherboards, making migration much more difficult than Ryzen's, although there are reports that Ryzen 4000 series CPUs won't be able to take advantage of previous chipsets either, which kind of sucks. But hey, we've had a good run, three different generations of CPUs all in the same AM4 socket, that's awesome. And look, in the cheaper Core i3's case, something like a 10100 overclocking won't be possible either. So, and we could spend hours discussing various leaks, but I want to focus a bit on Intel's current i3 offerings, in this case, the Core i3-9100F. At 75 bucks, it's hyper compelling on the surface. I mean, this is the cheapest I think a Core i3's ever been. I think the, the first Core i3 I ever bought was a 4150, and that ran me about 130 USD. So uh, this is definitely a step in the right direction. And yet, despite its modest 4.2 gigahertz turbo, it struggles to keep up with the Ryzen 3 3100 at a similar clock speed. And it's fairly obvious why, SMT. The Ryzen 3 has it, and the i3 doesn't. Intel knows this is a problem. People who buy Core i3s are doing so because their budgets are generally pretty tight. Same goes for the R3s. But why would you opt for this when for the same price or a similar price, you could have comparable IPC and twice the pipelines? I mean, heck, even the 1600 AF, assuming you can find one, is in this price range, and it'll slay both in the right setting. Team Blue's backed into a corner, and it's only saving grace is good old hyper-threading. But the big question on everyone's mind now, that we at least know we'll be seeing hyper-threading in these lower grade chips, is what they'll cost. If Intel manages to pump out an i3-10100F, whatever ridiculous name they come up with, I think that's the, the lowest grade i3 out there, if it manages to pump out that for a hundred bucks for going an IGP, which Ryzen CPUs traditionally do anyway, then we'll have a serious competition on our hands. And that may actually make me struggle to recommend one or the other. Sure, AMD's got AM4 and the versatility of that socket is nuts, but there are many who still swear by Intel either for the ring bus, either maybe optimization, maybe just the name, the resale value, who knows. And, and it could be enough to reignite that budget blue team fan base. And to my AMD fans out there, like I I'm sure you're thinking, well, yeah, so what? Even if the 10100 trades blows with the 3100, we've still got, uh, what, better platform support, we've still got overclocking support, and I get that, those are very compelling arguments. It's why, again, this is so exciting, because you will kind of have to pick and choose what you want in a CPU. That's something that I haven't, again, been able to do. We had a video talking about this uh, a few weeks ago. I've only been, I've almost exclusively been recommending Ryzen for the past, <laughs> year or two, uh, for a lot of budget conscious builders especially. You know, if you have uh, all the money in the world to spend, I mean, the options are endless there. You can go AMD or Intel and you'll probably be okay. Uh, but to maximize value, AMD's been it for the longest time. So maybe mm, the tides have turned a bit, who knows? We haven't tested them yet, but I imagine the 10100, uh, especially because that's gonna be the, the, the cheapest Core i3 they offer, uh, will be fairly compelling. I mean, it needs to be, Intel knows this. Yeah, but hold on, Greg, the, the need is a strong word there. 
care. I don't think they need to do anything. And maybe 120 bucks and they'll be fine. That's totally their prerogative, but I think it would personally be a mistake. They may not see the need in their higher tier SKUs, like the Core i7s, i sevens, i nines, right? Because consumers at those price points are often uh, so much more crystallized, right? But low budget buyers are extremely fluid in that they will maximize value wherever they can find it. And AMD's undeniably been the king of value. But will it stay that way? We shall see. Now, a bit of backstory as to why uh, this video has been formatted this way. I originally asked Intel to send uh, a 9100F for review and, and value analysis. I figured it would be uh, a unique video. It's the cheapest i3 they've ever made. Uh, so I thought you guys would at least enjoy it. Maybe tickle your fancy a bit. Uh, but little did I know they'd be announcing the hyper-threaded Core i3s shortly thereafter. And then of course with the Ryzen 3 stuff, I mean, it just blows the 9100F out of the water in the value department. So uh, the entire tone of this video had to change. Ah, uh, well, at least we know to avoid this i3. And if you're dead set on a budget Intel offering, I think your best bet is to wait until the new ones become available uh, or uh, heck, I don't know, maybe squeeze out a, a budget Core i5. But even then I would strongly consider you also consider Ryzen 5 chips that didn't really come out the way I wanted it to. Oh, and remember, cross your fingers in hopes that Intel will actually price its new CPUs attractively, which I think is a shot in the dark, but who cares? That's all for this one. Consider giving this one a thumbs up, I guess, and uh, subscribing. I'll catch you in the next one. My name's Greg. Thanks for learning with me.